What's up, everybody? This is Evangelist Ryan Sutton. I want to talk to you about Joseph today, about the life of Joseph. And I know a million preachers have have talked about Joseph, have, have discussed his life, have talked about the process that he went through to see the fulfillment of God's promises and God's dreams for his life. But I want to be a million and one today. I know a million preachers have covered it. I'm going to be a million and one because I love the life of Joseph. I've been so inspired by him. And we've entitled this, this brief message today from the pit to the palace. If you know anything about Joseph, you know that he was what I call the pet in his father's house. People that have younger siblings know about that. Many times the the younger brothers or sisters get spoiled just a little bit, and it was no different in Joseph's house. Jacob loved Joseph above all of his other sons because Joseph was the product of Jacob's relationship with Rachel. Rachel was Jacob's favorite favorite wife, and so Jacob favored Joseph, gave him a coat of many colors, and really Joseph was uh, next in line to be the ruler of the house. I believe that. I think that Jacob was going to leave everything to Joseph because he loved him so much. Not to the oldest who was Reuben, but to Joseph. And so Joseph was a dreamer. If you know anything about Joseph and you read in the book of Genesis, he was a dreamer, was filled with dreams and visions and uh, and dreams that he was going to rule over his family. And he shared those dreams and visions with him. I would say to you right now, you need to be careful sometimes about who you share your dreams and visions with. You can't tell everybody everything. You can't tell every everybody, everything that God shows you and reveals to you and speaks into your spirit. But Joseph made that mistake. He told his brothers, he told his father, and his brothers hated him. That's what the word of God says. They hated him for his dreams and his visions. And so many of you know the story. Joseph was taken by his brothers and thrown into a pit. Uh, I, I say there's a process in Joseph's life. He went from being the pet of his father's house to the pit, then to Potiphar's and on to prison and finally to the palace. And so the Bible says while Joseph was in the pit, his brothers talked about killing him and murdering him, but then they decided not to do it. They sold him into slavery and he went into the land of Egypt where he became a servant in Potiphar's house. Now, this is what I love about the story. The Bible says that no matter where Joseph went, the favor of God was upon his life. And I want to take a moment right now and tell you, my friend, it doesn't matter where you may be at today, where you find yourself along this journey of life. God says, no matter how good things may be, or no matter how bad things may be, his will is the same, no matter where you're at. He wants to release his supernatural favor into your life. Joseph was in Potiphar's, think about this, in a foreign country, away from his father, away from his family, his brothers, everything that's familiar to him, people speaking a strange language, all of these things, surrounded by foreign gods. He's a lonely young man, but the Bible says that in Potiphar's house, the Lord gave him favor, and so Potiphar made Joseph the ruler over all of his household. Now, the Bible says Joseph wasn't just good looking, but he carried himself well, and and so not only did all the little servant girls notice Joseph, but Potiphar's wife, the, the mistress of the house, noticed Joseph. And she started making passes at him and trying to get him to sleep with her. But the Bible says, and her lust became so powerful that one day she grabbed Joseph and literally ripped his clothes off of him. But Joseph was a man of God with a made up mind. That's what I love about Joseph. He didn't wait until he was in the middle of that situation to, to make up his mind about what he was going to do. He had a made up mind all already. And so when she ripped his clothes off, he ran out of the house. Many of you know the story. Potiphar's wife then lied on Joseph. I'm telling you sometimes when, when people can't get what they want from you, then they'll tell lies on you. They'll, they'll, they'll come against you. They'll criticize you. They'll make up false rumors. And so it was in the life of Joseph. The Bible says that she falsely accused him, said to Potiphar and all the people in Potiphar's house, Joseph tried to force himself on me. He tried to take advantage of me. And even though it was a lie. Joseph did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He said, how can a man such as I offend my master and offend my God? But when Joseph did what was right, instead of things getting better, things got worse. He went from the pit to Potiphar's, but then because Potiphar listened to his wife, he threw Joseph into 
the prison, into the dungeon. My friend, have you ever done something that was right? I'm telling you many times the hardest thing to do is the right thing to do. The right thing to do is the hardest thing to do. Have you ever done what's right? Have you ever done your best to please the Lord and do what you felt like you needed to do? And instead of things getting better, things seemed to get worse. I'm telling you, the devil was trying to dance all over Joseph's head, was trying to convince Joseph that he was a failure, was trying to tell Joseph he was never going to amount to anything. Joseph's in prison. It's Come on in here. It seems like a bad situation can't get any worse than it already is, and then it goes ahead and gets worse. I know a lot of us have been there. Sometimes we're dealing with all kinds of crazy stuff, and we think, Lord, it just seems like it couldn't be any worse than this, and then it goes ahead and gets worse. But you know what I love about God? The Bible declares in the book of Genesis that God was with Joseph in prison, gave him supernatural favor so that Joseph was made the master over all the prison house. And the Bible says God was with him there. Joseph had to wait years and years in the dungeon. And I'm here to tell you right now, sometimes we've got to go to prison. Sometimes I'm talking about uh, spiritually and emotionally. Sometimes we've got to we've got to go to prison, so to speak. We've got to be in the dungeon. We've got to go through pain and trial and tribulation and suffering. And it seems like, man, it's so dark. It, there's, there's death all around me. Things are not working out the way that they should. But the Bible says that while Joseph was in prison and while he was in the dungeon, iron came into his soul and iron came into his heart. That doesn't mean he got hard hearted and bitter. That means the strength of God so filled his heart that he said, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to say, forget all the dreams that God has given me. Oh, the devil wanted Joseph to stop dreaming. The devil wanted to rob Joseph of his vision, but Joseph held on and believed God. You know the story. Pharaoh had a dream that he couldn't interpret because Joseph had interpreted the dream of the butler and the baker. He went from the prison to the palace so fast that his head was spinning. My God, can I tell you a thing right now? Can I speak a word into your life and let you know that whenever God gets ready to promote you, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the prison. It doesn't matter how long things have been bad and seemed hopeless and, and frustrating. When God gets ready to promote you, he can do it seemingly overnight. Joseph came into the palace, interpreted the dream of the Pharaoh, and you know the story. Pharaoh made Joseph the ruler over all the land of Egypt. Joseph was second in command only to Pharaoh. I love to think about the fact Joseph suffered the first 30 years of his life to reign and rule for the next 50 years over what was then the greatest nation on the face of the earth. You know the story. Joseph's brothers came. They had run out of food and, and, and they, they said to themselves, you know, please give us something neat. They didn't realize who he was. But then Joseph, he, he went through a whole skit with them. But then he revealed himself to them. And whenever he revealed himself, himself to them, they were worried. They were fearful. They were afraid. They thought, Joseph's going to re repay us for what we did to him. Do you know what I love about Joseph? He was better and not bitter. He said, what, what the devil meant for evil and what you guys meant for evil, God meant for good so that many people could be saved. I want to say to you right now, my friend, I know that what you may be going through is difficult. You may feel like you're in the pit. You may feel like you're in Potiphar's. You may feel like you're in prison. But hold on right now. Don't give up on the dream that God has given you. Don't give up on the vision that God has placed down in your spirit. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future in me. I want to prophesy over your life right now. It's not by accident that you've come across this video. God has a plan, a great plan and a great purpose for your life. Something more awesome than you've even imagined. My friend, he's able to do exceeding abundantly far above all you could ever ask or think. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. It hasn't entered into your heart what great things God has prepared for you because you love him. Joseph went to the palace and you know what? All the pain was worth it. All the heartache was worth it. All the, all the trials and tribulations and junk and mess that he had to go through, it was worth it all when he got to the palace. And I want to say to you today, by the grace of God, by his supernatural grace and mercy. God's going to take you all the way from the pit to your palace in the name of Jesus. I've been saying it over and over again on other videos that we've recorded. I'm going to say it again right now. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare let go right now because God is just about to move mightily on your behalf. I like what King David said. He said, I would have lost heart. I would have fainted. I would have given up unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the 
land of the living. Can I tell you right now that you are destined to see the goodness of God in the land of the living? You're not going to die in the dungeon. You're not going to die at Potiphar's. You're not going to die in the pit. You can't go out like this. Not after everything you've been through. Not after all the hell on earth that you've endured. No, my friend, God has a miracle with your name on it. His blessing is going to be released into your life supernaturally by the power of the Holy Spirit. Promotion doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. It comes from the Lord. It's not up to anybody else but God what he does in your life. He loves you today. He cares about you today, and he's going to show up on the scene and move mightily on your behalf. I want to leave you with this thought right here. It was hard when Joseph waited for years and years and years in the dungeon. It was discouraging. No doubt he battled depression, but he refused to give up on the dream and the vision that God had placed within him. And I want to tell you, sometimes it's hard to hold on. Sometimes it seems like it's been this way for so long, right? And I, I don't know how it could ever change. I don't know how God could ever turn it around, but I want to speak prophetically into your life right now. God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for Joseph, he's going to do it for you.